FAQ number 85, is it okay to eat pork? Well, Leviticus chapter 11, verses 7 and 8. It says here, And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. Okay, um, who is this written to? You say, uh, well, the body of Christ, and, and uh, no, is written to the Jews in the Old Testament. All right, and when we're doing a video on this in the future, the thing of Old Testament law uh, versus Mosaic law. Okay, there are some things that are in the Old Testament, in the law, in the book of Leviticus, uh, in Deuteronomy and things. There are some things that are written that are in the Bible. They're in that Mosaic law, but they've never been undone. Okay, they are in the Bible's uh, set of standards and things, in the law. Now, what's the standard as for us as Christians? Well, you go to the Pauline epistles. Okay, that those, Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles. Uh, most of us are Gentile Christians. Um, certainly, I would say if, you're, if you are Orthodox Jewish and you get saved, um, I would be very careful around family members and things like that, that uh, if they're still observing these Levitical laws, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything to make them be offended. I'll show you that here in a minute. But um, actually, I'll show you it right now. I won't make you wait. How about that? Um, turn your Bible to the book of Romans. Chapter 14, verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Okay, so um, then it goes into the thing of, work, of celebrating certain days and holidays and things like that. But um, go down to verse 20. Romans chapter 14, verse 20. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Now look at that right there, okay? All things indeed are pure. We're going to see about this in just a minute here. I'm going to show you the verse that proves this. But it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. If I went and I was in Israel someplace, and I'm trying to witness to some Jews over there or something, and... You know, I go and I, you know, it's, hey, it's time to eat or something like this. And I pull out some big ham sandwich and slap it down and throw a bunch of bacon on it and whatever else. What am I doing? I'm offending them needlessly. See, I don't need to eat pork. You know, hey, take a couple days off from eating pork, you know. Uh, don't do that. You're offending them needlessly. Okay. Verse 21, it is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. Hast thou faith, have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if you feel it's somehow wrong or something like that, if it's a cultural thing for you uh, to not eat pork, well then don't eat it. I mean, you're not going to die if you don't eat pork. It's not that you have to have pork in your diet, you know, the swine's flesh. You don't have to have that in your diet or else you'll, you'll die or something. Eat beef or chicken or whatever else. That's fine. And you say, but, but are you sure we're allowed to eat it? Well, turn over to 1 Timothy. And I'll show you. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 3, well, actually, we'll start at verse 1. because It's important to get the context here. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So what do these seducing spirits and doctrines of devils say? Keep reading. Verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Okay, 
what did it say back here? Uh, all things indeed are pure. Romans chapter 14, verse 20. All things indeed are pure. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Okay? You can eat whatever kind of meat that you want to. Now, I'd be careful about the mystery meat. You know, spam and hot dogs and things like that. Because you don't know what you're getting there. I mean, it's not, you know, that you can eat any kind of meat, you know, that's... I mean, you can get into some really dangerous types of meat that's just a bunch of junk blended together and whatever else. It's more, it's not so much uh, that it's some kind of spiritually evil meat. It's just that it's unhealthy. And, you know, I've actually heard of uh, swine that are raised in, in forest types of settings, not just with grains and table scraps and things. And you can actually get fairly healthy uh, swine meat, uh, wild boars and things like that. They say it's a totally different tasting pork. Uh, you know, so there's there's some interesting things there. But the point is, the prohibition to not eat pork from the Old Testament, it does not carry over into the New Testament today for a Christian. So you can eat pork uh, if you want to. That's, that's totally optional. Pray for it. Uh, pray for God's blessing, sanctification over it. Um, I do understand that there are some, you know, issues with some of the ways that, that the swine are raised. It can be very unhealthy and things. Uh, some of that toxicity can get into your the, the ham or whatever else. But that can happen with beef. It can happen with chickens. Uh, there's all kinds of, I mean, I can tell you, I'll tell you a little story here, actually. I had a sister that actually used to have a chicken farm down in West Virginia. And they were told... The chickens were getting uh, dermatitis. It was uh, kind of an infection on their tail end. And um, they were told to put this chemical into the chicken feed and it'd get rid of the dermatitis. And my sister researched it and she's like, this stuff's poisonous. I mean, it's really, really, really toxic. And they're putting it into the chicken feed and then it's in the chicken system. And um, so she tried to fight the whole thing and the whole chicken industry down there is run by the Masonic Lodge and they basically lost their farm as a result of her trying to fight this and try to say we should use something natural instead of this chemical and uh, ironically they actually had a dog a, a yellow lab and this dog there there was one of the hoppers that had the chicken feed and go in and there was a little bit of a crack where the pipe would go in to feed the big huge feeding thing and the, the feed would spill out on the ground and this, their dog, she would go over and she'd eat this grain. Sometimes she'd go over and eat it and things like that. Well, she put on all kinds of weight, which is what the grain is designed to do for the commercial chicken things. And she put on all kinds of weight and ended up dying. And she wasn't that old. And so, you know, I believe it was the, the feed that killed her. But the ironic part of it is this chicken feed uh, actually, and the chickens that they would sell through the Pilgrim's, Pilgrim's Pride, I think, was it? Or Puritans, no, Pilgrim's Pride. I, I think it was something like that. But anyways, big chicken company in West Virginia. You can look that up if you really are curious about it. But um, they actually sold their chickens. This company sold them to Kentucky Fried Chicken. So you go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, you're getting chicken meat that they're using chemicals, poisonous chemicals, to cure them of diseases. I mean, it's it's a bad situation. So, you know, meat is... You know, you better pray and, and ask God's blessing and sanctification over any meat that you eat. Uh, don't just think, well, pork is really bad and the rest are fine. And, of course, you know, the other thing to watch out for there is forced vegetarianism. Uh, you start getting into the vegan thing, you're dealing with devils, okay? I'm not talking about somebody just saying, I just want to eat some fruit and vegetables for a while, just kind of a cleansing thing. Uh, that's fine. But you get into people that are just, like, radically opposed to eating meat. Uh, you're dealing with people that are possessed with devils, according to Scripture, not according to my beliefs.